The template editor module makes it simple to configure and design your very own interfaces. It's very easy to create any controller you need. This module fits in with your workflow. Let's start with a new template. To create one, tap on the Create New Template icon. Type a name and tap Create button. Below the next icon, the name of the new template is shown, meaning that this template is currently loaded and ready to get edited or performed. When you tap the Load icon, you will be presented with a list of templates already created and saved. To access one of them, tap it. From this menu, you can also delete a template. You can back up your templates on your computer by connecting your iPad to your computer. Open iTunes, select your iPad, go to Apps tab and select Touchable 2 in the file sharing list. Drag and drop the templates folder anywhere on your computer. Enter edit mode by opening the bottom bar. To switch to performance mode, hide the bottom bar by tapping it again. Objects can be added from a list in the bottom bar and then placed and resized in any way you want. Objects available are four control objects, button, slider, knob, XY pad, one design object called Label will allow you to add text anywhere in your template. And two different stackable containers called Grids and Boxes will allow you to work with several items at once and will facilitate the design of the whole interface layout. Box. This container can hold other controls and containers. If the size is changed, all contain items will be resized accordingly. You can add items to a container by selecting it. Its frame becomes red, and then by tapping the object type in the button bar that you want to add. You can move and resize the objects added to the box, fully as you would directly on the page. Grid. The grid automatically takes care of matching the sizes of its content views. Set the number of rows and columns and the grid will take care of the rest. So again, to add items to a container, select it by tapping in the bottom bar the object that you want to add. A highlight will appear that marks the positions where the object may be added. Another tap on the desired position will add the object to the grid. This container is different from a box. It automatically organizes all objects part of the container into a grid. You can change the size of the grid in the floating inspector. Stacking grids is just a very easy way to create powerful line interfaces in just a few minutes. To navigate inside stacked grids and boxes, tap on the target object several times. Each time you will move one layer further until you reach the object of choice. A long tap on any view shows the floating inspector. The floating inspector shows a number of advanced controls, depending on what kind of object is currently activated. All the control objects have obviously a parameter selection menu. Press Select Parameter to show the configuration menu. Tracks, Returns and the master are shown from top to bottom in the first column. Select one track and in the second column, tap on one of the shown devices or on the mixer device element. The last column will present you with a list of all available parameters of the selected device. Tap on one of them to select it for the current control object. The last section contains a slider which lets you set up the range of values applied to this parameter. By default, 0 to 100%. You can modify the range by pinching the slider. It can be a very useful feature, for instance, if you design a series of buttons to quantize the value of a parameter. Tap the validation button to activate the assigned parameter. Instead of a mixer or a device parameter, you can also assign a MIDI parameter by tapping the MIDI icon. You can select a MIDI CC or a MIDI note. 
Slide your finger up or down over the numbers to pick the channel, CC, or note number. The automatically assign helps you assign several MIDI parameters to several objects in a row. Finally, you can set the value range for the MIDI parameter by pitching the slider. Note that you can also quickly assign a parameter to a control object by simply use the Learn function. To do so, make sure that the Auto Learn option is turned on in the general settings of Touchable. In Edit mode, make sure you have selected the object you want the parameter assigned to, then move the desired parameter in Ableton Live or within Touchable by using a different view. Now this parameter is assigned to your control object and ready to be used as soon as you close the edit mode. Background color, border color and other color options allows you to choose a color for the object. Move the free coordinate lines within the triangle to pick a color. You can also define a level of opacity and change the tone of the color by using the slider on the right side. The three more recent colors picked are displayed in the bottom, for quick access. With the sliding on-off option, you can use your finger to slide over the object without having to tap and release every single object. Border on off enables disables the border. In the object's controls, you have an option to show or hide a title, which refers to the name and location of the parameter assigned. Sometimes, depending on the parameter, the title might be too long and you may prefer to hide your own title by using the label object. In this case, add the label, open its floating inspector and tap the black tab. Tap your text and press enter. You can increase or decrease the size of the font and choose to use a background and border color. You can also show or hide the value of the parameter. In the floating inspector of the button object, you have two options to define its behavior. By default, the button works as a toggle, but it can also act as a one-shot, meaning that once pushed in, it will lock the on state to the maximum value set in the parameter selection menu until the value is modified by another control. Momentary mode will activate the on state as long as you hold the button pressed in and will bring the minimum value back once you release your finger. Tapping the plus plus button will duplicate the object in your page. The duplicate object will be displayed on top of the original one. To duplicate an object on a different page, Open the floating inspector, add or change the page, then tap the duplicate button. The trudge button deletes the object. You can add pages just as easily as you can add objects. So if you like, you could have a page for each part of your live set in a template. Another template specially designed to cover a studio session, containing several customized pages. In half-view mode, each tap on the page arrows will scroll to the next half part of the page. 